Welcome to the Open Forum. Again, we have the privilege and the pleasure of looking together into the Word of God to discover truth. My, my, what an opportunity this is for us to talk together about what the Bible is teaching. If you've been researching the Bible, if you've been looking at this scripture and that scripture, you may have a question that has been, uh, you've been wondering about and share it with us on this program and maybe we can find some more truth. We want to try to be as faithful as possible. And this should be our constant prayer that on this program we only are teaching that which is faithful to God's Word. Now before we take our first call, uh, again I'd like to give a report on how our caravans are doing. Uh, this past uh, this past few days, the caravan has been in in uh, Tampa, Florida, where there were some special events going on, and it was a wonderful blessing there because not only were the, <coughs> the five uh, vehicles of the caravan present there, but also uh, God provided about forty of forty uh, family radio listeners from that area as well as from other areas that came to help to distribute tracks so it made a big impact there with so many working uh, now that uh, caravan is uh, is uh, Tuesday tomorrow will be in St. Petersburg Florida which is only a few miles away and then uh, uh, the next day they're going to be in Cape Coral Florida and they uh, then following that they're going to be for three or uh, from the f February February 5th to the 9th in Miami, Florida. And then from there, they will go uh, from the 10th to the 13th of February to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. If you have any interest in trying to help, uh, uh, you can call Family Radio and ask for the Caravan Department and... and uh, that they can uh, give you uh, exact details on this. Uh, in addition, there's a, we have another caravan that'll be in Dallas, Texas, uh, fr uh, from Friday to Monday, uh, and uh, there's a lot of activity going there because of the Super Bowl event. And uh, then from there, they will spend a day, uh, in the Wednesday at Waco. Waco, Texas, and then uh, from there they will be going to Austin uh, from the 10th to the 13th, Austin, Texas. And so if you are living in the area or want to take a drive down and help with the passing out of tracks alongside the caravan members, uh, you, you would be very, very welcomed. And incidentally, we are still accepting applications for families or individuals who are willing and committed to serve the Lord in this fashion all the way till that glorious day or that awful day, however we look at it, of uh, May 21, 2011, which you know is right now is only 110 days away. Can you imagine that? How close it is. Well, uh, we... Uh, our, right now should go back to our program and we're going to take our first call on our telephone lines uh, welcome to Omen uh, to, to family Ra uh, to the uh, open forum program welcome to the open forum program <laughs> you, you finally got it right um, hold on brother camping yes All right, let me turn, turn down my radio go ahead with your co question uh, yeah I just you know the only thing I wanted to point out tonight was um, all the verses in the New Testament that talk about uh, nobody can know the day or the hour of Christ's return. It's very simple what God is saying, and this is what people don't understand. What God is saying in these verses is nobody by themselves knows the day or the hour. Nobody of themselves, apart from the Holy Spirit opening their eyes to information that's always been in the Bible that we can know the last time. Well, uh, that is one possibility, but you must remember 
that uh, God said more than that. And when we compare this, these verses, no man can know the day or the hour. Yeah. Uh, they, with uh, Acts chapter 1, verse <clears throat> 7 and 8, there it indicates that throughout the church age, as long as God was operating, uh, uh, saving people within the churches, the Holy Spirit was active there. During that period, God said nobody could know. Nobody. Not because, uh, of course, God did not reveal it to them, but but it was uh, there, there was no possibility of anybody having it revealed. Unless we understand that, someone could come along and say, oh, well, no, that's not. The fact is that you're right that nobody can know unless God reveals it, but God has revealed it to my eyes, and uh, so... It would defeat the purpose of what God is declaring, that nobody could know, nobody could ever insist during the church age. And that ended in, as we learned from the very careful working through the timeline of, of, of the unfolding of God's salvation plan, all the way to the year 1988, nobody had the possibility, even, that God would open their spiritual uh, eyes uh, to our ears to know or spiritual understanding to know when that uh, when the, the Christ would return. But once we got past 1988, then uh, God began to uh, give more and more information about God's timeline. So that already by 1992 we were very very close to making an accurate. Uh, 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 understanding, have an accurate understanding of what God's timeline was to the end. You know, it's really amazing that the radio uh, evangelists and the television evangelists, it just blows my mind how they're not catching on to this kind of truth. Well, no, it, 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 it doesn't. You are teaching truth, Brother Camping. You're comparing scripture with scripture, and that's how somebody finds out truth in the Word of God is comparing Scripture with Scripture. And everybody thinks that you're a false prophet, but the true believers that listen, that we that are avid family radio listeners know that you're a child of God and you're teaching truth and most of the world cannot handle it. Well, the fact that, is that we can understand it very definitely. We don't, our minds don't have to be blown by it. The fact yeah. is that... Well, that unless God opens our eyes, and yes. why God opens someone's eyes, none of us deserve uh, to have our eyes open. It's only the mercy of God. And we who, if, if we have been searching the scriptures and God has opened our eyes to truth, my, my, we should be very humbled by that. Why me? Why me? How come I have come to know that from the Bible? Or I have checked out what is being taught about that, and I find that it is completely uh, taught in the Bible. Why me? We should all, if we have that truth, my, we ought to be so humbled by that, and and we must then... Uh, and we can understand entirely why others cannot understand. It just means God has not opened their eyes. Now, he may open some of these eyes before uh, May 21 comes, but at the present time, uh, uh, almost uh, virtually everyone in the churches are insisting that Christ is coming as a thief in the night, so yeah. their eyes are not open. But thank you for thank you. calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hi, Al. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Yeah, I just want to know something about Judgment Day. Uh, because I've listened to you. I'm calling from New York. My name is Ronald Pryor. And I just want to find out, is that going to be literally or spiritually? Is God uh, about Judgment Day? Yeah, about Judgment Day. Oh, well, God talks very literally about it, just like when he talks about the... The uh, Feast of Tabernacles, where he talks about it very literally. Uh, it has spiritual implications, but it was a very literal day. When he talked about uh, the uh, uh, Day of Atonement, it was a very literal day. When he talked about uh, uh, the uh, birth of Christ, it was very literal. Uh, the, the, uh, it did not mean it did not have uh, spiritual implications, but the... But the 
when when we search the Bible, we find that that uh, the uh, all, all the feast days were very literal. The day of the year of it, of uh, of the uh, of the, uh, the the fact that came every fifty years, the year of when it was announced to the world that God's judgment. Or that God, uh, that God would proclaim the gospel to the world. The, all, all of these, the, all of these things were very literal periods. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Farm. Yes, hi, uh, Brother Camping. Hello, Brother Camping. Yes, go ahead with your call. Yeah, this is James from uh, Florida. Hey, I'm uh, new to the Bible. I'm 55 years old, and I'm reading it for the first time. And I just have a general question. I'm reading uh, the book of Job right now, and I'm not quite sure I understand uh, what what God is trying to teach us here. Well, the book of Job is a very difficult book. Incidentally, you, you're you reading a very... But there are a lot of books of the Bible that are very difficult, and some are a little easier, but uh, all of them require a great amount of, of uh, comparing Scripture with Scripture to really understand. The book of Job, however, as, a, as, as we look at the book in its entirety, is a parable. It is speaking, he, Job is really a portrait. He actually physically, literally did live, uh, but in his experiences and all that we read there, it is describing, uh, uh, as near as uh, can be known, uh, uh, he is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. He started out with everything. He lost everything. Uh, and again, when it was all finished, he became even richer and more blessed than when when he began. It's really a picture of Christ. And the three friends uh, that uh, uh, that uh, counseled with him, they're a picture of, as near as we can tell, national Israel that did not understand Christ at all. Uh -huh. uh, in the book of Job, every sentence is the word of God, and therefore, it, it, as it stands, uh, uh, singly as a verse, it has it. it we can get spiritual uh, truth from it, but as it was applied to Job, uh, many times they, they they just didn't understand what was happening to Job at all. So it it is a, a difficult book, really. Okay. Okay. That's help. That helps. Thank you very much. Thank you for calling you. and sharing. And uh, shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello, Mr. Camping. How are you tonight? Very well, thank you. My question is this. If, if Christ, um, Christ died for our sins uh, before the foundation of the world, and those, those who are true believers were already chosen in the beginning, and if we are not saved by our work, then what is the purpose of passing out tracts and informing people of the end of the world and so on and so forth if it's already laid out, already played out? That's a very fair question. The fact is, in, if somebody was saved before the foundation of the world, in order for God to apply that salvation, and he must do that, only God knows who these are, in order for him to apply that uh, that uh, gospel uh, uh, to, uh, or, uh, or apply that salvation to this person's life so that he receives his eternal soul which will make him ready uh, to go into heaven in his soul existence that's what happened when we become saved there are two things that are required when we search the bible number one god resists the proud uh, he uh, he uh, uh, he, uh, if we are walking in our pride, we're not in an environment at all where we're going to be uh, be uh, 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 in a situation where God will apply that, that His word to our life. And so, as we are pleading with God, people, many, many, many people are pleading with God, coming broken before God. The Bible says. A broken and a contrite heart I will not despise. They are 
they are walking in humility. Now, this does not mean that they're going to become saved, but they are at least in an environment where if God planned to save them, he will save them. And why they're, why, why they're pleading with God, we can't tell. Whether it was because God uh, uh, caused them to do it, probably it was so, but maybe they were just doing it because they, uh, they began to listen to the Word of God. Now the second thing, the second thing that is required, uh, and that is, uh, we read in Romans 10, verse 17, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Now here's someone somewhere in the world, and remember, two-thirds of the world until our day uh, had never heard anything from the Bible. That uh, about two-thirds of the world had no connection with a church that featured the Lord Jesus Christ in any way. And yet amongst those two-thirds, there are many whom God had planned, ha- had already made arrangement to save them. So they have to hear the word. Well, how are, they, how are we going to get the gospel to them? And so as they hear the the warning that is going out all over the world and is being uh, uh, being heard in in every area of the world, Judgment Day. That's the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. They hear the word Judgment Day, or the words the end of the world. Those are words that are come right out of the Bible, and uh, and so they are now in a in a circumstance where. They are hearing the word of God. And so with those two provisos, and at least we know that much about what the way God is doing it, then if they are, if they should be one that God had already planned, had already paid for their sins, then God can apply that word. And it only takes a split second for God to apply that word to their hearts and, and they, that person will have become a child of God. So, it, so that's. But th- that does not mean that if we are pleading with God, we're broken and with a contrite heart, and we're hearing the word. That does not mean that it guarantees we're going to become saved. But at least we're in an environment where, if God planned to save us, He will save us. So faith. Faith is is a prerequisite to be a true believer. Uh, no, well, yes. That in fact, faith is not. It is not our faith that saves us. It is God. Faith is a work, and Christ did all the work. Uh, he made all the payment, all the arrangements for our salvation before He ever created the world. But He had, in order to apply it to our hearts. We have to hear the word, and we, uh, and God only, uh, and God looks for those who are walking very humbly before Him, and He He'll make sure that they are walking if humbly, if they are uh, those whom God has chosen, so that He can complete their salvation. But thank you okay. for calling and sharing. Good question. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Yes, Harold, I was uh, delighted to hear you reveal to your sheep the other night on your show that Yeshua, Jesus, and Joshua did have the same name. Um, I was curious, with all the trickery that went on in Rome, um, in the uh, translations and the... Excuse me, excuse me, I believe you you called... I believe you you called earlier this month. And so I'm sorry, we're not, we're only to call once every 30 days, uh, not more than that. Okay, my question, my uh, question. Excuse me, and so if you don't, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we're not going to be able to take your call. Well, you can call after 30 days, but thank you for calling and sharing, and shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello, Mr. Camping, uh... I have a question about Revelation 9, verse 12. Revelation 9, verse 12. Let's look at that. Revelation 9, verse 12. We read, 
one woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Yes. Now, what is your question? Um, I know you're teaching that um, the fifth trumpet is when the rapture occurs, and uh, but, but this verse is saying that uh, there come two mo two woes more hereafter, and um, um, so I'm just wondering how how do you um, like harmonize that with First um, Corinthians. Uh, 1552 where it talks about that um, we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump well you, but you see the the three woes are all almost all together if we go down to revelation 12 revelation 11 rather verse uh, uh, verse uh, uh, 14 and it is already talking there about the beginning of judgment day. A great earthquake uh, happens. We read in verse 13, the same hour was there a great earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell. This is also re all, this is referring to the first day of judgment. And then it says, the second woe is past and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. In other words, it's all these three woes really focus right on Judgment Day in one, two, three, and uh, that that is uh, that is uh, the way we must understand that. Yeah, but the um, it, it says that uh, one it says there come two woes more hereafter, and that is you know it's with respect to time. And well, so yes, but that time could be five minutes. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't. It 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 doesn't have to be uh, uh, five months later or okay, so a if year it's five later. Minutes, but I, I'm sorry, but if it's five minutes, it's still it, it, the you know First Corinthians 15 says at the sound of the last trump, and and you're ta you're saying that the rapture is occurring at the fifth trumpet, and maybe five minutes later the seventh trumpet does sound, but still it, it's not. It's not uh, at the sound of the last trumpet. You're saying it's at the sound of the fifth trumpet. Well, excuse me. The rapture and judgment day are, beginning of judgment day, are simultaneous in time. They're simultaneously. And so don't we can't work on and try to understand all this by the... Well, uh, well I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Camping, but I'm going to try to understand it because in verse 12 it's saying... Uh, 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 behold, there come two, mo's, two woes more hereafter. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, I, I just don't see how you can really square that with, uh, you know, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, you know, 52. 1 I mean, Corinthians uh, chapter 15, verse 52 and 53 have to do with the first day of Judgment Day which is simultaneously with the day of the rapture. It's all happening right there. That's going to be an absolutely incredible day. And it's uh, the three woes means that God's purpose has been, the number three signifies God's purpose. It has been accomplished. And it... Uh, and uh, uh, I'm sorry, that's as be the best I can do with that right now as I'm trying to answer your question. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello, good night. Yeah, welcome. What is your question? Could you explain the link between Israel and the Ethiopian Jews? Who call themselves the Rastafarians? What's the difference between the the link, the link, the link, or the link between Israel and the Ethiopian Jews who call themselves Rastafarians? Uh, excuse me, I I'm not qualified to answer your question. All I know is that the Bible says that Israel would begin be a nation. And uh, they are a nation, uh, clearly, uh, because they are identical in their homeland, and they, and uh, they, they are. There's no other group of people that that identify with the biblical language of being a nation, except those that are 
identified with their homeland. They're, a na they're the nation of Israel, recognized by the new world. Uh, the Ethio if people in Ethiopia believe they are Jews, they are not recognized as a nation by the na by the, by the other nations of the world at all. Uh, they are not emphasized anywhere in the Bible. And so, uh, there right now there are two kinds of Jews that the Bible focuses on. One are those who are in Israel who identify with the nation of Israel, who are citizens of the nation of Israel. How, how, uh, uh, how uh, uh, their pedigree, how, how uh, uh, unadulterated it might be, that's another matter. Uh, we don't have to be concerned about that. The other Jews that God is talking about is like Romans chapter 2, where someone is a Jew if we're a child of God, whether we're Ethiopian or uh, or uh, African or or Chinese or or American or whatever. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Thank you. What makes it go from B.C. to A.D.? What makes time go from B.C. to A.D.? Only uh, when, uh, uh, when we speak about a calendar. And theoretically, or, or it had been supposed, that Christ was born uh, six years after what he actually was when uh, when he was born when they when they developed the calendar the bc was supposed to say before christ the the people who didn't want to recognize the bible they said oh no bc means before the common era which is the era of of uh, of the new testament and the uh, and uh, the other one was uh, A.D., which means Anno Domino, that is after our Lord. And so theoretically, they were assuming that they had figured out correctly the birth of Christ, but they missed it by six years, uh, so that it was actually 7 B.C. when he, when we finally uh, know when he was born using the calendar that assumed he was born six years later. But it doesn't. It doesn't make a problem. It, it, it all. It all uh, comes out in the wash, so to speak. Welcome again. We are ready to take our next call. Welcome to Open Forum. Welcome to Open Forum. Hey, Mr. Camping. I'm so happy I got in. Um, I tell you, uh, me and my family, <clears throat> we're having the best time. We are in Beaumont, Texas, and um, we just looked on uh, your your webpage tonight and saw that you have a third caravan that's going to be coming to um, to Dallas and um, and also Austin. And uh, we have six children, and they all help us to distribute tracks, and um, we just have a really good time doing it. And um, we're getting a lot of really good responses in our area, uh, but we wanted to know uh, if you could tell us if the caravan uh, is going to be coming to the Houston, Texas area that's closer to us, and if you can't tell me that, if you could uh, direct me to someone who could tell me. You have to call Family Radio and ask for the caravan department. I'm not... I'm not uh... Uh, I, I'm not able to give you that information, but I am delighted for your call uh, because that is an encouragement perhaps to others also to assist in this kind of work with the caravan because that is so wonderful. All right. Well, um, we, we, uh, we love your ministry, and... Um, and we love everything that you're doing, and we're so glad that we can uh, be a part of it. Uh, and, and my husband has a question uh, from the Bible that he wants to ask you. Just a moment. Yes. Paul Paul. Uh, yes. That's what, my, that's what my kids call you, Paul Paul Harold. <laughs> Anyhow, on Job chapter 2. Job chapter 2, let's then, uh, what 
what verse? In verse 13, Romans 13, 13 and 14. Verse 13, Job chapter 2, verse 13, there we read, Job chapter 2, verse 13, uh, Job's three friends have come to commiserate with him because uh, terrible things have happened to him. And uh, uh, we read in verse 12, and, when, and they came uh, to visit him, and when they lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not, they lifted up their voice and wept because he was... He was uh, he looked so terrible because of his uh, terrible things that God had allowed Satan to do to him. And uh, they rent everyone his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. In other words, they were just distraught by seeing how terribly th this was, was that happened to Job. So they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights, and none spake a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was very great. Now, your, your question is, what does all this mean? And I'm sorry, I'm not really going to be able to help you with that. It is a, a seven, of course, is the uh, is a number that signifies completeness, completeness, and uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, uh, there, when we look at how Christ suffered for us, and uh, it was all done, of course, before the foundation of the world. Although uh, Christ demonstrated this when He went to the cross, and and when we really look at what how terribly, terribly Christ had to suffer in order to make payment for our sins, we're speechless. How would God ever do that? How would he ever, ever, ever uh, uh, love us so much that he himself would die? He himself would be cursed of God. This is a divine mystery. How could God be cursed by God? How could God kill God and, and, uh, and bury him and had, that he had to rise again? It's all a big mystery. And, but the fact is we just stand with in, in a, a, a total astonishment that God would do this. But it demonstrates that the love of God beyond anything we could ever imagine. It seems to me, if you, when you get time, I understand that um, you haven't went over it in a while, but when I was reading that, it talked about seven days and seven nights. It, they didn't say anything but silence. And I was trying to tie that in with 7,000 years, like since the flood, God has been silent about the wrath upon men, because when you see from chapter 3, verse 1, it said Job opened his mouth and he starts to curse the day that he was born. It talks a lot about darkness and the night and being the uh, shadow of death being stained it talks uh, almost like ju that's talking about judgment day the whole chapter three seems like judgment day and i was trying to tie that together i just couldn't i, I got some I, I i don't think we can tie that in because well maybe but i but i i have never really thought that much about this verse but uh it uh, uh, it is not 7,000 years that uh, uh, it, it actually is uh, 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 23 years less than 7,000 years that uh, that uh, because at 23 years before 7,000 years after the flood, God began to open our spiritual eyes so that we know a whole lot more even, uh, 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 several years before before Judgment Day actually did come, and yeah, I, 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 I just don't. I, I, I somehow that just does not seem to fit. If we're going to talk about seven thousand years, then it better be seven thousand years and not six thousand nine hundred and twenty-three years or something. Yes, sir. Well, look, I'm not going to keep any longer. There's other people waiting to get in, but we just want to say that we love you. We're enjoying giving out tracks. Yeah, and, well, uh, that. we're uh, we're we're doing a lot of uh, ministry down here, and keep up the good work. And and um, if we don't get to talk to you again, 
we just want to tell you that we love you and we've loved your ministry and thanks for all that you've done. Well, I'm very grateful for your call because this encourages all of us. How can I, how can I, I get busy and try to answer God's command that we are to help to warn the world that Judgment Day is almost here and at the same time give the world the wonderful news that God is still saving today. Only if we're going to be in an environment for salvation, we better cry out to God for mercy. It better be a genuine humility before God, and uh, that's not something we like to do. It's uh, in our pride. We don't want to do that at all. And But uh, at least that is the environment in which God is applying his word to those whom he planned to save. But thank you for calling and sharing. And uh, shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Mr. Camping, isn't it true that you are saying a year as a thousand years, uh, I'm sorry, a year as a thousand years, a thousand years as a year with God? It is a year as a thousand years. God only uses, applies that in one situation, and that is the time from the flood waters to hitting the uh, world in Noah's day to the time that is coming in uh, in this year. That's seven thousand okay. years, and it uh, and it identifies with the fact that Noah, a preacher of righteousness was told by God in seven days the flood is coming and uh, and uh, the, uh, the safety of course was in the ark which represented the safety of being safe in the arms of the Lord Jesus and so if we make the application there it fits perfectly because seven thousand years after Noah was telling the people of his world that there were seven days left, 7,000 years. Uh, it fits perfectly with this year when, when Judgment Day okay. is beginning. Okay. And that is the okay. only application that we know of that the Bible allows as, as we search okay. the whole but Bible. It, okay, but isn't it true that God warned... Uh, uh, Noah, 150 years before the flood, he told them, prepare the ark, and the flood is coming. 150 years later, the ark came. Yes, but God did not give Noah the information that seven days God is going to send the flood waters until seven days before the flood waters came. came. He knew 120 yeah, years earlier, excuse me. He knew 120 years earlier that uh, that God said that mankind would only have 120 years, but that but finally when it got right up uh, to the time, and uh, and all the animals of the world that had to get on the ark must have already been there because he had just seven days in which to get them on the ark and that was that was only uh, it was at that time god gave the specific day not 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 uh, a, a year like 120 years that he knew what year it was going to be but he didn't know the day and that when it is uh, 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 tied in with Second Peter 3 verse 8 a day is a thousand years and a thousand years as a day then we have exact precision in how God is using that language but thank you warning. hello and thank you for calling and sharing and shall we take our next call please Welcome to Open Forum. Mr. Camping, does everlasting life translated correctly in the New Testament, does it mean everlasting life or is it an eon or someone told me that, that there's a translation that was uh, mistranslated the whole New Testament. Everlasting eon. life means forever and ever and ever. There is no place in the Bible where God gives an, an illustration where everlasting life is anything but everlasting life. It's quite different than when God talks about everlasting fire. There he gives an illustration 
to, to show us that we are to understand that, that it is fire that causes everlasting death, even though the fire itself, it may only be one day or, or five months at the most. Or, uh, it, uh, it, uh, there God gives a very definite definition, but in everlasting life, it's everlasting life. It's forever. All right. Thank you. Thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. <clears throat> Good evening, Brother Canton. Yes. I have a question. Uh, we know uh, from the information that God has given us in these final days that the May 21st day is is totally and completely accurate with no no doubt at all uh in noah's uh, i mean in the uh, days of uh jonah uh we know also that that uh, uh day was correct when uh, god told jonah in 40 days i'll destroy nineveh uh, my question is uh since god uh changed his mind about Nineveh, and he spared Nineveh. In your study of the Bible, have you ever come across anything that would indicate that God uh, might change his mind on May 21st? The, uh, that's a very fair question, and but you know, you'll notice the difference. Uh, that, uh, first of all, there is nothing in the Bible that uh, suggests at all that he might change his mind. But, but let me, let me, uh, let's focus on, on those two, uh, 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 times. In, uh, what happened in Jonah, in the city of Nineveh? The whole city, from the king on down, sat in sackcloth and ashes that is, that is, became completely uh, uh, humble before God, and they turned from their sins and, and cried out to God for mercy. They knew they were, were on their, uh, that they deserved to be destroyed. And so the consequence is, uh, and as they prayed as a whole city, uh, oh, could it be that uh, God uh, might re might change His mind? That God did. It didn't mean that the whole city became saved, but many, many people did become saved. Now, let's look at the world today. As we are re reaching the world w with greater and greater intensity, that Judgment Day is coming. Do we see the whole world? Uh, beginning to cry out to God for mercy. Oh, Lord, is it possible that this might not happen? And the answer is absolutely not. We find that the wor world is uh, mocking God. Uh, they are, uh, even people that were reared in the churches who, who've been taught from the Bible in, themselves and, and uh, very diligently from the Bible. All, uh, we always knew that adultery was a very great, great sin. And yet in all kinds of families, our children are, are living without the benefit of marriage with an, another individual, living in adultery. And they think that they're still f saved because they were made confession of faith or they were baptized in water. They don't even recognize that adultery is sin. They're so they're they're uh, so they're just living without any understanding of the authority of the Word of God, even though that's what the churches uh, had been teaching them the authority of the Word of God. We look at the world itself. We look at the gay pride situation, and and uh, where all kinds of people are saying. Oh no! Homosexuality is no, is just another way of life. It's not a sinful thing at all, and yet the Bible is crystal clear that it's sin. In other words, the 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 reaction of the world today and the reaction of Nineveh to the prophesying of Jonah is altogether different. Altogether different. In our day, uh, the Bible is being mocked. 
It is being uh, scandalized. It is being ridiculed. The Bible has no authority, really. Uh, we ha have decided in our church this, and we've decided that, and uh, and in the world we we have decided that there is no creation, and by all the evolutionary scientists, and uh, so and a lot of people have bought that. It is an entirely, entirely different reaction to the warning that judge that there's going to be destruction at a certain date. And so we can't, and so we're not at all surprised that in Noah's, in uh, jo Jonah's day, God did change his mind. But in our day, no way. No way. It is going to happen. In fact, it's appalling. It's appalling when we see the development of sin, of greed, and adultery, and sexual misconduct, and, 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 uh, stealing and lying and all and all the, the things that mankind are doing that are so contrary to the word of God as if as if there had never been a gospel preached at all well that my friend is a perfect answer to my question and it just goes to clear up my mind and prove further that May 21st is cut in stone, and it, and it helps me to uh, uh, understand God's judgment plan. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you for calling and sharing, and shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. This is Robbie Redlocks. That Ross was right. Haile Selassie is the kingly Christ type, but we have to adhere to what he said. Yeshua HaMashiach is the... Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Now, we only call once a month, not more than that, and I'm sorry. I cannot take your call. But shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Mr. Campin. Yes. Is it fair to say that you are a replica of David J. Stewart back in the 1800s who was predicting the same thing that you're predicting and it didn't happen? And if it does not happen May 21st, what are you going to say to the people who uh, you are watching? Me. Excuse me. When we finally uh, be begun to trust the Bible. We trust everything in the Bible. When we don't, when we learn something from the Bible, we don't say, what if it didn't come to pass? We know it will come to pass because it is written by God and God has always fulfilled every commitment He has ever made. Uh, he, He prophesied that Israel would be a nation again and that as a nation they would not accept Christ as Messiah after almost 2,000 years they are a nation he, he prophesied that Jesus when he came to demonstrate how he would make payment for our sins would be born in Bethlehem he was born in Bethlehem God has made prophecy after prophecy and they have always become fulfilled because God is, is absolutely trustworthy in all that he says. And he has every, there's nothing that he cannot do that he has prophesied. And so for uh, one of us who, who have a little tiny mind and we're saying, well, God has prophesied that Judgment Day will be May 21, that when we... Uh, uh, when we analyze all the language God has given and then say, but if it doesn't happen then, well then it simply means we are saying we know more than God. We don't trust God. And frankly, God has given proof after proof after proof. And we don't have to accept that. We can say, well, you still could be wrong. Fine, fine. It means you just don't trust the Bible. And those who don't trust the Bible... They are simply saying they know more than God. And it's amazing to me. So many people who claim to be Bible lovers, and they're saying, oh, it, 
we know from the Bible it will not happen. And I say, well, where is it? Where is all of this? What do you do with all of this information, all of these proofs that God has given us that we know it is going to happen? So I'm sorry. It is going to happen, and we have to stay right there. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hi, Mr. Campion. Yes. I am calling. I just want to uh, just just ask you a question. You know, please don't hang up because I notice you're hanging up from a lot of people. But the thing is, how can you say that Israel is a nation that has come again? Because it, everything about Israel is in agreement with the Word of God. Everything about it. The timing of it, the uh, the consequence of them becoming a nation, uh, everything fits perfectly. There's nothing that is out of place. And and uh, it, but in order to know this, we have to read the Bible very very carefully. And I can tell you, we always must approach the Bible. I don't know anything, Lord. You teach me, because God is the one who has to open our spiritual eyes. And and uh, we never want to fudge with the Bible. We never want to say, "Well, this looks kind of like it, and it it could it could fit." No, no way. It, if if when God is fulfilling prophecy, it is very accurate, very precise, and that's what we're finding in in arriving at at. Uh, uh, at uh, May 21, it's a very, very precise fulfillment, and and all along the way, as we have uh, as we have developed or understood from the Bible, the development of of the of opening of God's salvation plan again and again, things work just with great perfection, and so we know we have the truth. But the people who live in Israel are not the Israelites. They are not God's people. Uh, well, so that even, doesn't... They, that, country was, that country was made in 1940, we did it in 1942 or 1947, I'm not sure. How can you say those group of people are the Israelites? Because not... everything, excuse me, everything about, this, this doesn't have to mean that every citizen is a a Jewish person, but they are not the nation of uh, of uh, uh, Ahab or something. They're the nation of Israel. That is their name, and they have taken that name because they are the people in the world that most clearly identify with the nation of the world. They're accepted by the whole world as the nation of Israel. You and I can sit outside and, and be critical and say, oh well, yeah, but they have this, that, and, and this doesn't fit, and that doesn't fit. Well, the fact is, everything about them fits, whether and it doesn't require that every citizen in that nation be, uh, be a... A 100% Jewish person. They are as a nation, and that is what God indicated that as a nation they would be again a uh, a recognized as a nation in the world, and 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 the timing, all the timing aspects fit perfectly into God's plan. What God uh, as as God has has. Uh, uh, given us all this information about God's plan. But thank you for calling and sharing. And uh, shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Good evening, Mr. Campin. Yes. You forgot to say the date. The date I'm sorry, what is your question? You forgot at the beginning to say the date of the show. Oh, did I? Oh, I did. I did. I did. Forgive me. Let That's me okay. see. <laughs> I got anxious about getting into the program. This is the January third, thirty first, two thousand eleven edition of the Open Forum. Oh, and that's boy. more important than you realize because when we hear it on the weekend and we want to hear it again, 
that date helps a lot of people. Well, thank thank you for uh, correcting me. Have a good evening. Thank you. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Uh, Brother Kevin, uh, John chapter 7, the Gospel of John, chapter 7. John 7, one. let's turn to that. John 7. There we read in verse which? What verse are Beginning you? Can you get verse 1, please? John chapter 7, verse 1. Verse 1. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now, what is your or what is your question? Uh, Brother Camping, I understand uh, a sister called earlier, and she alluded to this, and I know it's also true in the state of Israel today, a uh, it is it is actually a, a, a criminal offense to uh, to to teach the New Testament. Hold on, hold on. I'll be back with you right after this message. Each weekday at this time, we bring you Open Forum, a telephone talk program airing questions on biblical issues. This feature of Family Stations Incorporated will continue in just a moment. Be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. This verse from Philippians 4 indicates how important prayer is to us. But do we know how God wants us to pray? Our Lord gave us the perfect example for prayer in the Bible, and its true meaning is examined in depth in the booklet, Lord, Teach Us to Pray. Family Radio is offering this exposition of the Lord's Prayer free of charge. Please call 1-800-543-1495. That's 1-800-543-1495. Or request it on the web at familyradio.com. No spaces, just familyradio.com. We continue with more of the Open Forum. You are invited to call in and ask questions or discuss issues that are related to the Bible. Our number is 1-800-322-5385. That's 1-800-322-5385. When your call goes on the air, please be ready to turn your volume down. Here is our host and Bible teacher, Harold Camping. We're continuing with the open forum, and we have a caller who is indicating that in parts of Israel today, it's a criminal offense to teach the New Testament. I'm quite aware of that. I've said this many times. If, if you went to Israel and stood on the corner passing out tracks, the likelihood you'd end up in jail. But what is your question? Yes, uh, Brother Camping, uh, my question also refers back to Matthew 24, when uh, the disciples came unto, unto the Lord when he sat upon the Mount of Olives, and he said, what should be the sign of the end and, and of your coming? And the first thing Jesus said, uh, speaking to his closest disciples, was, take heed that no one deceive you. So that would indicate that there is a great deception being preached in these last days, and the great deception centers upon the identity of Israel. The state of the people well, of well, now, excuse today me. are not Israel. Yeah, now excuse me. Now you have made a, a, a statement that you cannot prove at all. You are saying that this indicates a great deception uh, that, uh, that has to do with the state of Israel. The Bible doesn't say that at all. It doesn't say that anywhere. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. Revelation uh, 2, verse 9, when we go to that, we, we find there that uh, 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 I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy 
blasphemy of them which say they are Jews uh, and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Now we have to understand how God wrote. We have to under the, in this case the, the the Jews are defined by Romans chapter two, where it says a Jew is someone who trusts in the Lord Jesus. And in the churches, this this was in a uh, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for uh, one of the early churches that were uh, formed in most of them in Asia Minor. Yes, all of them are, were. I think in uh, it's now the nation of Turkey, and uh, and. Uh, there were those who claimed to be true believers because the Bible emphasizes that a true believer is a Jew. But they are of the synagogue of Satan. That is, they are not saved. If we're not saved, we still are a follower of Satan. Now, you know, I'm afraid that we're getting a lot of, uh, a lot of callers who are, are trying to discount the idea that the nation of Israel is a fulfillment of prophecy. It was interesting uh, 63 years ago when Israel became a nation. All kinds of people in the churches, in the churches, were rejoicing because now prophecy had been fulfilled and they were correct. Prophecy had been fulfilled. The fig tree had come in leaf, and they were very correct about that. And uh, but they didn't understand uh, 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 following out uh, about that. They were convinced that Israel would uh, would now become a child of God. They would really recognize Christ as their Messiah. And now, 63 years have passed, and they absolutely do not recognize. Christ as Messiah, and that also was prophesied clearly, but they did not understand that. But they were correct, absolutely correct, that the fig tree, Israel, had become a nation again. Now, I, I, I wonder, I wonder, why are we getting so many calls at this time? Uh, is it about Israel trying to discredit this prophecy? Uh, of Israel becoming a nation is it because it it uh, weak it 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 is a wonderful wonderful proof that we can trust God that when He makes a prophecy it will come to pass. You know, we it, it, it just just a few days ago, just a few days ago, someone told me, which I had not known myself at all, that when Israel. Uh, became officially became a nation. That was May 14, 1948. May 14, uh, and they officially became a nation. And from that day until May 21 of our year, there are exactly 23,017 days. Now let's think about that a minute. I checked that, of course. I never take anybody's word for anything. I checked it out, and they, were, they did their homework accurately. It's exactly 23,017 years. Now, we've learned a long time ago that the number 23 signifies judgment, it's, and number 17 signifies being caught up into heaven. And the nature of the gospel is that it it uh, is a uh, it is a gospel that is a savor of life unto life that's pointing to seventeen being caught up into heaven and of death unto death that's pointing to judgment uh, that's signified by the twenty three and uh, and so you and so on May twenty one of this year. Uh, it will be 23,017 days since Israel officially became a nation in fulfillment of the Word of God. And exactly 23,017 years, the gospel era will be completely ended. All the true believers will go up to heaven. That's number 17. And the unsaved will go into the day of judgment. There you have your 23. And, uh, and the thousand simply emphasizes the, com the full completeness of, of the fact that judgment will come. 
Now, this, this in itself is not a, a tremendous piece of information, but when we put that little piece of information along with all the other pieces that have that all lock together it just it just makes the whole the, to use an old phrase the cheese gets more and more binding it just it just uh, uh, it, it, it fits very very beautifully into everything else we know but there but there's no point in trying to uh, to discredit, discredit this whole business of Israel because you don't want to give give any uh, assistance at all to show that that God fulfills his prophecies. Oh my, don't ever, ever do it for that reason because uh, God is God and he, every prophecy he's ever made, he has fulfilled it if it has fit within the timeline of today. But thank you for calling and sharing and shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Yes, Brother Camping, good evening. Yes. Uh, I have a question uh, in uh, verses in, uh, Ma- I'd like you to compare a couple of verses in Matthew 24 and Isaiah 66. Uh, it's uh, Matthew 24, verses 18 through 20. No, back Matthew 24, let's look at that. Verses 18 to 20, there we read... Neither let him which is in the field, it's talking about the conditions in the great tribulation that we're just getting to the end of. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight may not be in the winter, neither in the, on the Sabbath. But for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Now, what is your, what is the verse in Isaiah? Isaiah in Isaiah sixty six verses uh, ten and eleven, and then I have a question. Yes, all right. Let's look at Isaiah sixty six, verse ten and eleven. We read, Rejoice ye with Jerusalem, and be glad with her. All ye that love her, rejoice for joy with her. All ye that mourn for her, that ye may suck and be satisfied with the breasts of her consolations, that ye may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. Now, what is your question? Well, my question was, you know, I know that uh, in in a lot of these uh, places in Isaiah and Ezekiel and Jeremiah, you know, when we're talking about Jerusalem, it's a reference in many cases to the churches. And uh, here in uh, Matthew, we're talking about uh, the um, the uh, let him who uh, uh, woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. And, and I was wondering if that verse in Matthew could also refer to those in the churches, those who are being nourished by the church and, and receiving their uh, sustenance from the church spiritually. And if there was a time between those verses, especially since right here in Matthew, you know, in the next verse it says, uh, but pray ye that your flight may not be in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. We've been talking about Israel, uh, you know, the, the sign of the fig tree, you know, that uh, when, it, when it's in bloom or it's the leaves are I, I, coming, shooting forth, it's summer, which is the harvest. But when it's in the winter, it's after the harvest. In other words, it's, it's too late. You know, the harvest has passed, and now it's judgment. And I was wondering if all of these were tied together. I, I I hear what you're saying, and there is some suggestion in what you're saying that there might be some connection. But I'm sorry, I'm I cannot comment about it because I have never looked at it from that vantage point. Offhand, it doesn't sound like there is a connection because Jerusalem is talking here in Isaiah about rejoice ye with Jerusalem. Jerusalem being a reference to the kingdom of God. How wonderful it is and that we receive our spiritual nourishment with them, with it. 
And when here in Matthew, it is talking about those who are are uh, uh, fleeing, fleeing from the ki- kingdom of God. Uh, fleeing, that is, from the churches because we have been instructed by God in in Matthew 24, verse 15, mm-hmm. where it says that when you see the abomination of desolation, then le- then uh, flee to the mountains. And so I really don't think these two relate. I think they're, they're you know, both, uh, of course, dealing with aspects of the gospel, but with, mm-hmm. with quite different aspects. Well, thank you very much, brother. Thank you for calling and sharing. And uh, shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Farm. Hello, Mr. Camping. Yes. Long time no talk. Uh, Matthew chapter 24. Yes. Verse 29 and 30. Verse 29 and 30. There we read 29. Uh, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now, what is your question? Uh, Please compare that to Ezekiel chapter 32. Ezekiel chapter 32 let's look at that Ezekiel 32 and let's see which verse you want uh, 7, 8, 9, 10 probably 7, 8 7 to 10 Ezekiel 32 verse 7 to 10 we read And when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give her light. All the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over thee, and set darkness upon upon thy land, saith the Lord Jehovah. I will also vex the hearts of many people, when I shall bring my, thy destruction up among the nations, or bring the, the destruction among the nations into the countries which thou hast not known. Yea, I will make many peoples amazed at thee, and their kings shall be horribly afraid for thee, when I shall brandish my sword before them, and they shall tremble at every moment, every man for his own life in the day of the fall. Now, what is your question? Maybe a rhetorical question, but I, I would like your feedback. And are these two passages uh, related one to another? Are these passages related? Yes, they are related. They're both dealing with the time that happens immediately when Judgment Day begins. Uh, the uh, uh, we have to understood this, to understand that there it's spiritual darkness. It's not physical darkness. There's nothing in the Bible that uh, uh, assures us at all that there will be activity in the in the uh, sun or the moon, physical activity. Uh, but uh, uh, but uh, there is, uh, of course, tremendous spiritual activity because the beginning of Judgment Day is the end of God's salvation plan. And God uses the stars and the sun uh, uh, to emphasize Christ is the light of the world. The uh, the moon is emphasizing the law in in another place, for example. The law is... uh, is ter- the moon is turned red, is, is, is turned to blood, uh, indicating that the law is bringing judgment. And it's, uh, it is, there's no suggestion, none, that I'm aware of at all, that says that there will be a change on May 21 in the, in the uh, sun or the moon or the day and the night. They, they will continue right up to the end of Judgment Day to mark off the time that will end up 
five months later. And thank you for calling and sharing. And uh, shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. An exceedingly wealthy family started buying up land and property in Palestine in the early 1900s named the Rothschild. Now, they did name it the State of Israel, which they don't even adhere to Yahweh's laws. Blessed be his name. However, they hate, they absolutely Excuse me, African excuse Hebrews. me. Now, you, are, are, you have called earlier, and please, you know, please call just once a month. I'm sorry. We're not they going, despise African Hebrews. We're not going to. We're not going to be able to take your call. And uh, you, I, I, I'm sorry. We have to go to our next caller. Welcome to Open Forum. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes, uh, uh, Brother Camping. Uh, I'm. Uh, uh, I'm a new person uh, listening to you here. And. Uh, you know, just within the last week or so. Uh, and, you know, I've seen you on TV and on, um, you know, I just caught you on the radio here on WKDN. You know, I just, last couple of days I got that. Uh, and I sent for some of your literature. I got, could I ask you a couple of quick questions? Or? One question for each one to ask me the one which is most important to you at this time. Okay. The most important one to me right now, because I haven't gotten any of your literature yet, but I'm very interested, and I think you're very sincere. Uh, the the one that uh, 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 puzzles me maybe the most uh, is that I, I was brought up Catholic, and you know, there's heaven, hell, and purgatory. Um, if you know, you you say to you know to beg for forgiveness to god and, and whatnot and to you know follow the bible which i'm going to try to do i don't even have one yet but i'm going to get one uh i i want to know if you pass and you don't go uh to heaven uh is is the other alternative hell or i've heard you say that you just lay scattered and, and you're dead period is there a hell an actual hell yeah or, now you know in in yeah, I was brought up in the church and uh, was a very uh, uh, right in the heartbeat of the Protestant movement, and and I taught a lot of things that the ch all the churches teach about Judgment Day that uh, that uh, finally at the end all the unsaved are going to stand before literally before Christ as the judge and be found guilty and be thrown into a place called hell or or. Uh, uh, a lake of fire and they'd be there forevermore suffering right. billions of years suffering suffering and that's the way uh, uh, the churches all teach in our day or, right. or virtually all the churches teach that way and uh, that of course uh, uh, gave a lot of incentive for people to join churches because then they asked oh my that's awful what can I do Oh, look, my dear friend, what you do is you you come to our church and we'll show you how you can become right with God and not go to hell if you become a, a saved person. And we'll show you how to do that and, and uh, you faithfully uh, follow the rules of the church and everything will be fine. It all locked together is a beautiful way to get people to go to church. But it was all false. Every aspect of it was false right. hell is a synonym for the grave the grave is the proof of death we put dead people in a grave or in a tomb right. and that is what hell is and when and the bible teaches very clearly the wages of sin is death and when you're dead you're dead yeah you're the bible speaks of it you're being you're dead in your soul you're dead in your in your flesh you're dead and you'll never never again have conscious existence now included uh, as we tie in all the information about god's judgment included in that death is the fact that god will also shame you 
and he will do that by desecrating your body or your remains and that is the one of the big activities of the day of judgment uh, when that great earthquake comes uh, on that first day of the day of judgment the graves will be uh, thrown open all over the world simultaneously and the corpses or the bones or the whatever's left whatever remains or the atoms or whatever is are going to be thrown out and and uh, and shamed in the eyes of god uh, as a part of the death program uh, to, it's, uh, because by being under the curse of God it indicates we're eternally separated from him and that's what death does we're eternally separated uh, uh, from him and uh, that is uh, that is, uh, you see God is a merciful God we must recognize that God declares in the Bible he has no pleasure in the death of the wicked uh, and Christ wept, we read it in another place, over Jerusalem that was subject to the wrath of God. And he, and he wept over it. Uh, God himself, eternal God, because when Christ uh, came to uh, demonstrate how he made payment for our sins when he was born of Mary and so on, uh, he was eternal God in every sense of the word. We can't understand this, but he, he, he said, for example, to his disciples, any man who has seen me has seen the Father, and I and the Father are one, and uh, made other statements of that kind to assure us. He was eternal God, and, and yet here he is weeping because he has to bring his wrath uh, on on those who uh, who ought to know better and have rebelled against him uh, like he like ancient israel and like uh, like the churches of our day that's 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 the nature of god but uh, and so hell is simply that we are dead when and the grave is the proof of our death uh -huh. and and there's nothing after that then and that's that, and and you don't get the gift of uh, going going up with him uh, there's nothing in between, right? There's nothing in between. There's no purgatory. There's right. like the Roman Catholic teaches. There's right. nothing at all. Either we're dead and never have conscious existence again, or if we become a true believer, if we die, our body is put temporarily in the grave, and then it's resurrected on the day of of uh, of the rapture which is simultaneous with the first day of judgment day whereas our, in our soul because we have become saved we have been given eternal life at the moment we became saved and therefore when if we die we in our soul go to be with christ because we can't die we have eternal life and we'll and then at, at judgment day we will receive our glorified spiritual body which will be which will be caught up out of the tombs as a as a, an eternal spiritual body and we'll be with him as a whole personality therefore forevermore uh, brother camping one other quickie with that you no know, excuse me now there's our question and please uh, uh, keep listening and and uh, try again in 30 days with your another question please thank you very much and shall we take our next call please welcome to open forum yes hello harold Kenton. uh listen uh when moses when when moses was uh the part of the sea like how old was he when Moses, how old was Moses when he parted the Red Sea? He was yeah. 80 years old. 80? 80 years I, old. I don't know how you, but how do you arrive to like uh, uh, 2,000 years, I guess? I guess. Because I know there was, it was like uh, 1988 when he came out of the church. And uh, there's 23 years of um, tribulation, he said, or something? Please, uh, you know, the uh, uh, I can't answer that question on this program. It's a little too complicated. But it, it, we have written a, 
a booklet uh, that's only about 70 pages and it's free of charge. You can download it on your internet if you are able to uh, if you are able to use your internet. Uh, and if not, you can send for it. You can call for it or write for it. Uh, and uh, it's uh, entitled "We're Almost There," and we're, it'll be sent to you free of charge, so and that you can what? you can carefully search all the verses of the Bible that were used to show that 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 is the way the timeline of history has come out. And also, if you want to know the earlier uh, time of like the time of the flood. Uh, send for the booklet or download it, the Biblical Calendar of History. That also is absolutely free. But thank you Mike, so much Mike. for calling and sharing. Now, we've come to the Mike. end of our time, so I, I'm sorry we can't have any more conversation. I'm going to have to say good night, and that's exactly what I'm going to do in just a moment. Good night. Good night.